Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Guardrails. I remember driving home two weeks ago and seeing guardrails smashed, and rightfully so, because they were trying to keep a car in that had veered off in the snow. I was driving home from the doctor's office and of course it was snowing, so whenever I'm driving and it's snowing, I get a call from my mom. You okay? Yes, mom. Drive slow. Yes, mom. And, I'm like, and so, and rightfully so, because then I saw this car who had been driving too fast, had tried to round the corner and just kept going right into the guardrail. And I thought, wow, where would that guy be without that guardrail? He'd been down a ditch, maybe even dead. God gives us guardrails in our life to keep us on the journey to happiness. We see that he gives guardrails to our Israelites. The Israelites we see in this first reading here, it talks about them getting the commandments on Mount Sinai. We've all seen it in different movies, whether it be uh, the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston or maybe even Mel Brooks's short snippet on the Ten Commandments. It's, there is a sense of this wonderful moment where Moses comes down and he's given these commandments by God. But it's more than just the commandments. Because a chapter earlier, we see God making a pact with his people. I will be your God. You shall be my people. And I will lead you through this desert to happiness, to the promised land. Not just a land where, okay, now we can live, but I can lead you to protection. I can lead you to happiness. And so the Israelites say, sure, great, we'll follow you. And God says, well, we're going to keep these guardrails, these commandments that are going to help you stay on the journey. Because if you veer from these commandments, it's not that I will just punish you. No, you will punish yourself. Because brothers and sisters, the law are guardrails for our happiness because God knows what it takes for us to be happy. And so it's not just for the Israelites, but for us today. Not just for people of the Jewish faith or the Catholic faith, but it's for everyone. You may be thinking, well, hold on there, Father. Three of those have to do with God. And yes, even people of all faiths, of everyone, those three are the most important. Why? Because it reaffirms our belief by not putting any idols in front of God, by not taking his name in vain, which is also means not using his name to get whatever we want. We say those prayers, Lord, give me this, as like he's some kind of genie. And of course, keeping holy the Sabbath, those three commandments are first and foremost important because without those, we can't really do the last seven but they reaffirm our belief that God truly wants our happiness, that he knows what's best for our happiness, and it's an act of faith when we follow them, an act of belief that, yeah, God really wants and knows what's best for us. So we have to ask ourselves the question, do we believe that the Lord truly has the words of everlasting life? And how much do I believe in that? Because I th we're all here, so in some sense we do believe it, or else we wouldn't be here. But how much more can we believe in it? That's what our Lenten practices are for. Our Lenten practices aren't just like to make us suffer or to give up bad stuff. No, it's these Lenten practices are putting God in his proper place 
almsgiving. I'm going to give of good things because I trust that God's going to give to me what I need. Fasting. Do I really put those material goods, including food, as the main source of comfort and happiness in my life? And then penance or prayer. Do I set time aside to let God guide me on the journey to happiness rather than trying to carve it out for my own? Yes, these Lenten practices reinforce in us the belief God is guiding me to happiness. And the law, when we follow it, reaffirms that this is the way. And if we don't follow it, we'll die in a ditch off the road. And so we are all on the journey and we have food for the journey just like the Israelites. We have something even better than the Israelites had because while they had a mysterious bread, this is the bread of everlasting life and the chalice of everlasting salvation which will lead to that life. Receive it and ask for the grace to put God first and foremost in your life. Not one among many gods, but the only God. And ask for the grace to follow the way that he leads for us. So we don't end up smashed into the guardrails of the law or off in some ditch in our sin. But no, smoothly riding along with the Lord on the way to happiness because the Lord has the words of everlasting life. He is the word of everlasting life and he will guard and guide our journey to happiness.